Video games have been engaging players for decades, but games don't generally cover museum walls. I don't think I, everyone really thinks that games belong in museums still. I'm hoping that this exhibition helps change that, so maybe 50 years later we'll be thinking, oh, well, of course they do. The Open World Exhibition is not an ode to Pac-Man, but a look at the many ways games affect artists and culture. Teresa Bemnister conceived of the idea for this exhibit 15 years ago, and she's been working on bringing it into reality for the past three years at the Akron Art Museum. When I talk to artists about their work, often younger artists, when I did studio visits with artists who are still students, they would mention that even though they were doing maybe a traditional medium like painting, they were thinking about the way video games looked, um, painting a landscape that looked similar to the background of a particular video game. So it was clear to me that that was something that was really influencing artists who are living and working today. From video games that make social statements to drawings that appropriate characters and symbols, this show demonstrates a variety of the ways gaming inspires artists. I spent a lot of time playing computer games, but I never took them seriously as an art form until I started noticing that the stories and the way they were told were very different from how I was understanding or interacting with stories from books or movies. So um, the idea of interact interactive narrative was what initially caught my attention. Philadelphia-based artist Tim Portlock has three prints hanging in the gallery. They reflect a blend of his background in landscape painting and 3D modeling. The cities in each of the landscapes contain empty and abandoned buildings. I select buildings from the cities that I visit and then I recreate them in my 3D modeling software and I rearrange them and render those out to make the landscapes. Another artist photographed homeless people as depicted in Grand Theft Auto, an idea that sparked while playing the game. I remembered that every player has a virtual smartphone in their pocket in the game and I took it out, there's a little camera app on it, and I just started photographing them. Um, and I'd kind of stopped playing the game after that. I was, you know, turning on my PlayStation just to uh, log in and take photographs. And I decided I was just going to take photographs of the signs of poverty in the video game. Next to the printed photographs, Ireland-based artist Alan Butler displays the many files that collectively build the imagery within the game. It's kind of looking at how like the value system and how a computer reads the game. There's no difference between these people and, you know, the, the litter on the streets or the crumbling wall behind uh, where they stand. It's also a chance for people to reflect on reality as much as it is in virtual reality. The open world exhibit showcases a variety of media in addition to the varied influences of video games. The artists are making drawings about games, they're crocheting artwork about games, making quilts, they're painting, in addition to doing digital animations and making video games themselves. One thing that I think is a little unique about video games is that you do have artists who are using games themselves as raw materials, so um, modified games. While it's not every day a museum looks at contemporary art tied to gaming, it is an opportunity to present something fresh and potentially attract visitors who don't always go to museums. It's really important to me that it's an educational opportunity for pe people too. So people who maybe don't have that background in video games like me, I wanna make sure that they can go through the exhibition and feel like they learn something new about games. For people who have that background in gaming but not in art, I'm hoping that they'll come away from the show feeling more confident about what they know about artwork.